the rhino, the second largest land mammal in the world after the elephant, weighing a ton and built like a tank. It has roamed the earth since prehistory, but today it is fighting for its survival in many parts of its former range. September 22 is World Rhino Day. On September 15 this year, Texas-based charity International Rhino Foundation released its 2020 State of the Rhino report in the run-up to September 22. The report presented an analysis of what this year has been like for the five extant species of rhino in the world. In Africa, rhinos have had some rare good luck in the form of the COVID-19 pandemic. With borders, national parks and game reserves shutting down earlier this year and a large security presence in place, poaching gangs found it difficult to operate. Moreover, the trafficking routes to China and Vietnam, the main markets for rhino horn, were also shut. So the good news about the lockdowns during COVID-19 is that with so much strict enforcement of uh, stopping vehicles from going into the national parks and people not leaving their homes, it actually really hindered the movement of poachers. Poachers often will go into the national parks posing as tourists and they were unable to do that during the strict lockdowns. So poaching declined in Africa most parts of Africa tremendously during the lockdown. And in fact, in South Africa, which is the country where we have concrete numbers, the number of rhinos poached dropped almost by half in the first six months of 2020 compared to the first six months of 2019. Now we are concerned that as lockdowns ease and life begins to get back to normal, that there will be an, a rise in poaching. Uh, but it will, has been a little bit of a reprieve for rhinos in this uh, eight months of 2020. Of the two African species, the white rhino, whose name is in fact an anglicization of an Afrikaans word meaning wide for the shape of its mouth, currently numbers 18,000 individuals up from 3,512 in 1973, according to the IUCN African Rhino Specialist Group. The smaller black rhino has declined from 37,807 in 1973 to 5,630 now. According to the report, the white rhino saw and will see declines this year, while the black rhino has seen a modest increase in numbers. Rhinos and white rhinos, the two African species, um, are both listed under the IUCN's red list of imperiled species. Black rhinos are listed as critically endangered, and there are about 5,600 black rhinos left in Africa. White rhinos are in maybe a little bit better shape, although they are still listed as near threatened, with about 18,000 white rhinos remaining in Africa. Black rhinos are population we believe has been increasing over the years with a lot of hard work and protection against poaching. It's still a huge threat, uh, but their numbers have been increasing. White rhinos, while their base numbers are larger currently at about 18,000, white rhinos, white rhino population has been decreasing. And that of course is a brave concern. The report though warned that the COVID pandemic could lead to an increase in rhino poaching in Africa, with local economies breaking down. It also noted that anti-poaching operations on the continent had suffered since they were financed by tourism, which has declined due to COVID. In Asia, the report highlighted how the smallest rhino, the Sumatran, had entered a crucial phase in its fight for survival with less than 80 individuals left in Sumatra and Indonesian Borneo or Kalimantan. Sumatran rhino is arguably our most imperiled rhino with fewer than 80 individuals left. And there are a host of problems when you have a species with so such few numbers left. Males and females have a hard time finding each other even to reproduce. And th there are known reproductive problems with the females so that they are unable to reproduce. So when you have a large mammal that does not reproduce quickly, they only have one offspring at a time, the fact that they 
have additional reproductive challenges is just a huge concern for this rhino species. It's the smallest of the rhinos. It's the one that's the little hairy rhino uh, that's very cute. They live in just these amazingly biodiverse ecosystems in Indonesia, uh, ecosystems that in some areas also contain orangutans and tigers and sun bears and tapirs and, and lots of other species. So it's such a unique ecosystem and such a unique species that is in trouble. Its counterpart from Java though had seen a modest addition to its numbers this year, increasing from 68 to 72. However, the Javan rhino faces threats from illegal fishing and lobster trapping in the Ujung Kulon National Park, its last bastion on the island of Java. We have some good news to report about Javan rhinos, a species that is also critically endangered with fewer than 80 individuals. But I'm very happy to release the uh, brand new news today that there were two baby Javan rhinos born this year, bringing their population from 72 to 74. So while the species is, of course, critically imperiled, their growth, uh, they, there is some population growth and very good news with two baby rhinos. There is also good news for Asia's third rhino species, the great one-horned rhino found in India and Nepal. Its numbers are steadily rising in both countries. It numbers 3,600 currently in India. However, the IRF expressed concern on the proposal by the government of Assam to build artificial highlands in the Kaziranga National Park and Tiger Reserve to protect rhinos and other animals from the annual floods. This year in Kaziranga National Park, we saw the sixth largest flood on record. So uh, it was a very serious flood indeed. And rhinos and other wildlife do need places to escape. There are currently highlands in Kazaranga National Park and the government is looking at additional ones. The International Rhino Foundation believes that this should be a very slow and intentional and deliberate process. So there should be scientists and engineers and others working together to really study the best way to put protections for rhinos and other wildlife during these floods, but without rushing into the addition of more highlands before it's thoroughly studied. There are approximately 600 greater one-horned rhinos in Nepal. And unfortunately, because of COVID-19, Nepal had a census plan for the rhinoceros population this year that had to be postponed. So we're hoping that they get to do a new census uh, as soon as it is safe for everyone to do so. And uh, the, with, of course, the more information you know and the more facts you know about how your population is doing, then you can make better decisions about what conservation measures to take for the species. There are also efforts going on to resurrect subspecies like the northern white rhino, of which only two females remain in the world now. Artificial reproductive technology is a very exciting tool in the conservation toolbox. And with species that are as imperiled as rhinos, we need every tool and, and every option we have for saving them. It has not yet proven to be the silver bullet for saving these species that are on the brink of extinction. And in fact, just a few days ago, I heard some disappointing news about the efforts with those northern white rhinos that the embryos didn't take in this most current, I believe, um, effort uh, to, to work with them. At its peak in 2011, the price of rhino horn in Hanoi, Vietnam was more than double the price of gold a staggering $80,000 per kilogram. The wholesale rhino horn prices declined by 50% in China and Vietnam, from $65,000 per kilo in 2012-14 to $30,000 per kilogram in 2015, according to a study led by Esmond Martin and Lucy Vigne. This year, the COVID-19 pandemic has led to a further crackdown on illegal trafficking of wildlife products. But the report has noted that the price of rhino horn, which has been declining since 2015, has not deterred poachers. 
As we celebrate another World Rhino Day, let us hope that humanity comes together to save the rhino. Or in the words of the IRF, keep the five alive. World Rhino Day brings all of us together to celebrate these magnificent species. There are five species of rhinos left on Earth. They are so incredible. They're important to the ecosystems in which they live. We have a moral imperative to conserve these species for future generations. And so World Rhino Day is a great excuse for us to come together in celebration of rhinos and the habitats in which they live and think about how we can work together to save them for the future.